Hey there, I'm Dirk Rinker and I've uh, been coming to Woodlands for about six months. I've been up here on the mountain for three years, but my family has been enjoying Crestline for decades before that. And as Pastor Daniel got into the book of Acts and started specifically talking about the story of Cornelius and the vision that he had of an angelic visitation, started talking about Peter and the vision he had of the sheet coming down from heaven, it struck me that I have a story that I personally experienced along with 30 other people that is very fitting for this, for this discussion. And so I wanted to quickly relate that story to you all. Dunwoody Glacier is um, a slab of ice about 150 feet thick that spans across the eastern slope of the Continental Divide up in Wyoming. And it's uh, in the Wind River Range. It's the fourth largest glacier in the Rocky Mountains. It's a, it's a huge place. It's very desolate. It's up at above 12,000 feet. And in 1977 or so, uh, there was a group of Boy Scouts that I was a part of, uh, Troop 35 out of Pasadena, California. And we were about halfway through a... Um, a 12-day trip, about six days into the wilderness, and we uh, we were approaching Dinwiddie Glacier. We needed to get across the glacier, across the pass to the valley beyond to get to our food drop. So we were we were hungry and we were motivated. Um, so that sets it up a little bit. So we were hiking our way up this glacier, and when I say hiking, that's a loose term. We had ice axes, we had crampons on, we were fully suited up for cold weather. Uh, the ice was radiating cold up uh, into our faces as we hacked steps up, switchbacking across the glacier, rising about 1,500 feet, till we got to a saddle, a saddle uh, between two mountains. It was a wide, flat, rocky place. And we uh, set up there, and we'd been, we'd been climbing for about three hours, three and a half hours at that point. We said, let's have some lunch. Um, we were bushwhacking it, by the way. Uh, there were no trails. Uh, we were just going off topo maps. Um, we were out in the middle of a veritable no man's land. Um, it's a, it's a, just a uh, middle of nowhere. Um, we, um, we got up to um, about, you know, 12,500 or so, 12,500 feet, and set up there on some rocks and, and pulled out what little we had left of supplies, you know, some uh, trail mix and some cheese and salami and bread and stuff like that. Tang, if you remember what tang is. Yeah, we had tang. Um, and on warm days like that was, um, the, the mountains have a way of creating their own weather. They, they kind of, um, the, the cold from the glacier interacts with the warmth of the sun and it creates cloudy situations. And we were up there in this, on this saddle and a whiteout just descended upon us, just came in so thick. And it was, you could, you could easily see 15 feet into the distance, 30 feet maybe. It was, it was pea soup. Um, and we were surprised to see a person approaching us from the direction that we were headed. Uh, this, this person was a solo hiker. They had nobody else with them. They barely had any, even had any equipment. They had uh, this, this older man, probably about 65, 70. Um, well, I, I think he had a, a fedora type cap on. Um, he was wearing maybe leggings, uh, knee socks, um, uh, not really hiking boots like we had back in the 70s. Um, not your typical Loas or Alpspitzers or whatever. He had, you know, just kind of like regular shoes. And he was dressed like an 1890s mountaineer. I mean, he had a tweed jacket on, for crying out loud. Uh, you know, it's like lapels. And here we are hiking in down jackets, you know. So it gives you an idea of the context. 
And this fellow comes walking out of the mist toward us. And, hello, how are you doing? Uh, we'd offered him some lunch. He declined. You know, we offered to share what we had. And we, we talked about, where are you coming from? You came up the glacier? Wow, you know, it's impressive. And, and uh, it's, where are you going? Okay, you're headed over to those lakes. Great. Um, and he proceeded to give us advice. He told us, um, as you walk, as you walk, uh, we were going at that point, headed southwest. As you head southwest, you're going to come to a, um, a, a face. You know, you're going to come to a, uh, a drop off. And you want to take, there's three ravines, and you want to take the third ravine over. So the third ravine on your right, you want to take that one. Great. Okay. Super. You sure you don't want any lunch? No, no, it's okay. So we, we got ready to, you know, depart and, and, uh, and then we looked around, and he hadn't said anything more, but he was just gone. He just, we, we had no, he didn't say, you know, see you later or anything. He was just, where'd that guy go? You know, everybody was looking around at each other. Where, where'd the guy, where'd that, we, you saw the guy, where'd he go? Well, anyway, we followed his instructions. I mean, <laughs> You, get, you hear something like that, but what else do you do? You follow his instructions. And uh, there were th there were three ravines. The, like the first two, the third one was very steep. It was probably about a 50, 55 degree slope. I mean, if you think of what a 45 degree slope is, you tilt that up. Um, it, it was a steep slope and it was full of scree. Uh, scree is like tiny rocks. Um, they slide on top of each other and and so on. So the three calls were virtually identical, but and the, a call is what they call a ravine in the in the high alpine area. Um, and so <laughs> we took the third one, and he took a step down into that, and you basically slide three feet. Um, so up at the top, our leaders, I was one of them, our leaders would say, okay, you go, then they wait 10 seconds, somebody else goes, and so on. And uh, it, pretty soon, we were flying down that hill. Uh, we, were, we were leaping into the air, um, landing 10 feet below, and then sliding for 15 feet. We were, we were flying down that ravine like nobody's business. It was like skiing on, on gravel, right? So um, we made it down. It took us three hours to get up to that elevation. We made it down in probably 20 minutes. Uh, so very, very quick, uh, very quick. And when we get down to the bottom, of course, we're out of the cloud. And we can look back up and see where we came from. And looking back up to the top, um, we noticed that, oh, there's ravine number one. There's ravine number two. And there's the one we just came down that we're at the bottom of, obviously. Ravine number one and ravine number two ended about a thousand feet above us. They ended in a thousand foot sheer cliff face. Had we relied on our own intuition and the topographic maps, it's undeniable that there would have been some severe loss of life. Years later, We, we still think about, about that situation, you know, it's, it's humbling to think what could have gone wrong if we hadn't had that chance encounter with this odd little guy dressed in the 18, you know, in, in mountaineering uh, apparel of the 1890s. And we, we have to think, if it wasn't for his advice, we could have easily cho chosen the wrong path. And why did he appear right then, out of the mist, to encounter with us at exactly the right spot and tell us exactly what we needed to know? Furthermore, he was 
I mean, we were six days in. We were six days from getting out, too. And yet here he was, dressed in clothing that was completely inappropriate for the situation, at 12,000 plus feet elevation, with no tent, with no sleeping bag, and with no significant outerwear that we could see. I mean, the best we could see was he was carrying something like a day pack on his back, a little rucksack. So how did, he, how did he know to arrive right then? How did he encounter us right then when we needed it? How did he tell us exactly what we needed to know? How did he get there? Beyond that, how did he get up to us? When we went down the call, the one that he told us to go down, that ravine, we were slipping and sliding all over the place. If he had taken, if he had come up that direction and taken a step up, he would have slid back down. And for a 65, 70-year-old man, it would have been virtually impossible to arrive at that spot where we were from the direction he was, we were going. And all around us, there were steep mountain peaks. I mean, it was just, it was nothing. There was, there was no way to get up there from where we were, where we were going. And we, we can only conclude from, from all this evidence. I mean, and beyond that, I mean, where did he go when he left? <laughs> he didn't say goodbye. So long, see you later. Nothing like a normal, you know, 20th century person would. He just... It was like he just vanished into the clouds. And we're all looking around seeing what, where, what happened to him. He was just here a minute ago. Um, that we, we can only conclude that he was our guardian angel. That he was not from this world, sent here to guide and protect us on our way. And having experienced that... Uh, and having going through the book of Acts in the past few um, few weeks and, and months, I thought it appropriate to share. God bless you all.